In this video, I want to talk about the reduced form and structural equations in simultaneous equation models. And we're going to talk about a little bit of the issue of both of these two particular ways of writing down a simultaneous equation model. So keeping with the example we had last time, the idea is that we had an individual's wage being determined by their level of status in society. And it was also dependent on some sort of governmental policy term, which I'm representing here by this policy variable, as well as a whole range of other factors which are contained within this error term epsilon 1. And furthermore, we found, or we sort of stipulated, that status would itself be dependent on an individual's level of wage, and it might also depend on whether that individual was married, which I'm representing here by this M term here as well as a whole range of other factors which are contained within this error term epsilon 2. And although I probably didn't mention it in the last video, these two equations are what we refer to as the structural equations of our simultaneous uh, equation model. And they're structural in the sense that this represents the underlying economics of what we think is actually going on. So this should represent our sort of theory here. But we spoke about the issue with estimating these two equations via OLS at least, and we found that because of the fact that wage is going to be correlated with the error term epsilon 2, and because status is correlated with epsilon 1, OLS will both be biased and inconsistent. Okay, so we know that doing OLS on these two equations isn't necessarily the right thing to do. But at the end of the last video, we also derived another form of our equations. So we found that we could actually write that wage was a function of, let's say, delta naught plus delta 1 times the policy term plus delta 2 times whether an individual is married plus some composite error term, V1. And in order to get this form, essentially what we need to do is we need to substitute in status, um, which is given by the second equation, into that of the first equation. So you'll find here that delta 1 is itself a function of beta 1, uh, it's probably also a function of gamma 1, uh, and a whole range of other factors in the other coefficients as well. And v1 itself is going to be a function of both epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. Okay, so that's the first equation. We could also find a corresponding equation for an individual's level of status. And we could say that status is equal to let's say eta naught plus eta 1 times our policy variable plus eta 2 times whether that individual was married plus some composite error term v2 which again it contains e1 and e2 but it is a slightly different functional form of e1 and e2. And these two equations taken together are what we refer to as the reduced form uh, representation of simultaneous equation models. And it's reduced form because of the fact that, essentially, these equations don't really tell us anything economically. They're just the result of us rearranging two economic relationships. And because of that, we've kind of lost something. We've lost the economics of the situation. But the benefit of these reduced form equations is that, in general, because policy and marriage are taken to be exogenous, then we could, in theory, estimate these two equations by OLS, and under the same set of Gauss-Markov assumptions that we've already stipulated, OLS would both be bi uh, sorry, unbiased rather, and consistent. So on the sort of face of it, it appears that that might be quite a good thing to do. But the problem with that is, is that even though we might be able to identify um, delta 1, or estimate rather, delta 1 and delta 2 um, sort of an, in an unbiased way by OLS, we can't necessarily from delta 1 and delta 2 actually back out our coefficients of interest, which are really beta 1, beta 2, gamma 1, and gamma 2. So just because we can get delta 1, delta 2, and eta 1, and eta 2, we actually can't get back to our coefficients of interest. And because of that, essentially estimating reduced form equations isn't necessarily a sort of way of sort of getting out of this situation, because we even though we can estimate these equations, they don't really tell us that much. So that's kind of the problem with estimating equations when they're in reduced form. So we need a way or a strategy to estimate the parameters of interest which are actually given by our, our structural equation 
instead of going to reduced form, we need another sort of methodology for doing this. And we're going to talk about in the next video how we can actually identify or what are the conditions which enable us to identify parameters and estimate them if we have this sort of form of a simultaneous equation model.